Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember to support our channel, please subscribe. The disgusting abuse of Queen Elizabeth I. One of the greatest queens in history is the Tudor monarch of England, Elizabeth I. During her reign, she managed to see off and defeat the Spanish Armada, and also deal with other plots inside of her land. Her greatest rival was Mary, Queen of Scots, and Elizabeth even sanctioned her execution, which took place inside of Fotheringhay Castle. But Elizabeth had a very hard life before she came onto the throne. She had her own mother executed inside of the walls of the Tower of London, with Anne Boleyn, Henry VIII's second wife, beheaded in brutal scenes. But as a young lady, she was subjected to some harrowing abuse at the hands of a man who was supposed to look after her and keep an eye on her. At the age of 13, Elizabeth, or Princess Elizabeth, was a young and impressionable girl when her stepmother, Catherine Parr, married a man she had been romantically linked to previously, Thomas Seymour. But Seymour has gone down in history as one of the biggest villains in the Tudor period, and he would go to his execution, being beheaded, accused of treason. He was a power-hungry deviant who, despite being around 25 years older than Elizabeth, showed a keen interest in the Queen. It's unknown if he showed some romantic interest in the young girl purely for power, and he had even approached the Royal Council, trying to ask their permission for him to marry her. It was said that this idea may have attracted some interest from Cat Ashley, Elizabeth's governess initially. At the time, it looked incredibly unlikely that Elizabeth would ever become the Queen, as the Great Hope was with King Edward VI, the only son of Henry VIII, or legitimate son, and it was believed that his children would become the heirs to the throne, and the crown would go that way. But as the years continued, Thomas Seymour made a number of inappropriate and unannounced visits in the early morning to the princess's bedchamber. It's not known why, and Elizabeth often woke early to make sure that Seymour would not find her in bed. These actions were repeated, and Elizabeth even had her servants try and hide her in places, so that Seymour could not find her. In some occasions, she would be hid behind curtains and in cupboards, with Seymour then continuing his search for the princess. Elizabeth's governess was later imprisoned in the Tower of London, as Cat Ashley had been linked to Seymour's plot to steal and seize King Edward. It was reported from the interrogation that, if Elizabeth were up, he would bid her good morrow and ask how she did and strike her upon the back or on the buttocks familiarly and so go forth through his lodgings, and sometimes go through the maidens and play with them, and so go forth. Today, this behaviour in the world would be linked to sexual or physical abuse, and it could lead to the accusations that Thomas Seymour would have been grooming Elizabeth. But in the Tudor period, this was a time in which Elizabeth would have been deemed old enough to be betrothed and even possibly married to Seymour. However, despite being considered a creepy guy, in Tudor England, the men saw him as a ladies' man. He had recently turned the head of the notorious King Henry VIII's widow, and Elizabeth could have been married off to keep Seymour quiet. Cat Ashley a number of times witnessed Thomas Seymour's inappropriate behaviour, and she did tell him off about the inappropriateness of his morning visits, and Seymour claimed he was doing nothing wrong. Catherine Parr would also bat back these accusations, and she played down Thomas's behaviour as nothing more than horseplay. Cat Ashley even caught Seymour arriving in Elizabeth's room bare-legged and in his slippers, and was caught trying to get into bed with the young girl. The servants of her household would talk and gossip, and the last thing Elizabeth wanted was the king finding out about any possible scandals. She didn't want to be linked to her mother, who was accused of adultery, and she did not want the label for being a harlot. When Cat did tell Catherine Parr, the woman who was supposed to be looking after Elizabeth, there were other accusations linked to her. Catherine allegedly joined her husband in the early morning inappropriateness, and was once caught restraining and holding Elizabeth while Seymour ripped the princess's morning gown. But did Elizabeth think this was a game? In June of 1548, Catherine Parr had enough of any possible behaviour between the two, and she then sent Elizabeth to Chestnut to go and live with Sir Anthony and Lady Denny, after she caught Elizabeth embracing and hugging Seymour. Three months later, on the 5th of September 1548, 
Catherine Parr died from complications from childbirth. To show her love, Catherine left everything for her husband Seymour, and her daughter was left with nothing. But Thomas Seymour, ever the creep, quickly decided that he needed another powerful wife, and he wanted this new spouse to be the Princess Elizabeth. At the time, he grew jealous of his brother, who was the Lord Protector, and Thomas continued to bribe King Edward's servants to try and say nice things to gain favour with the king. Thomas even gave the king pocket money, and to dry and buy his affections, but as nothing occurred, he then tried to plan a audacious attempt to seize and kidnap the 11-year-old King of England. This attempt occurred on the 16th of January 1548, when his brother was in Scotland during the War of the Rough Wooing. Edward VI's dog, in the middle of the night, barked and Seymour shot it dead, and then Thomas fled into the night and the whole of the story came out. Thomas claimed he tried to test out the King's security, but the events were later reported to the Roman Emperor as... I have heard here that the Admiral of England, with the help of some people about the court, attempted to outrage the person of the young king by night, and has been taken to the tower. The alarm was given by the gentleman who sleeps in the king's chamber, who awakened by the barking of the dog that lies before the king's door, and cried out, Help! Murder! Everybody rushed in, but the only thing they found was the lifeless corpse of the dog. Suspicion points to the Admiral because he had scattered the watch the night on several errands, and because it has been noticed that he has some secret plot on hand, hoping to marry the second daughter of the late king, the Lady Elizabeth, who is also under grave suspicion. On my arrival in England, however, I will write the truth more fully to your majesty, having nothing now to go upon beyond the information given by those who repeat common report." Things moved very quickly and Thomas Seymour was arrested and was accused of treason and attempted kidnap. A bill of attender was passed against him on the 5th of March 1549 and the following day he was led up to Tower Hill from the Tower of London where he was to be executed. He had been found guilty of three counts of treason, the first being attempting to kidnap the king, the second being to plan to marry Princess Elizabeth to strengthen his claim to the throne and the third was keeping armed men at Sudley Castle with the intent to start a rebellion. But along with Thomas Seymour, there was great accusation levelled at Princess Elizabeth and the members of her household, many of them including Sir Thomas Parry and Cat Ashley, were arrested and taken to the Tower of London to be questioned. Elizabeth herself was even interrogated by Sir Robert Tyrrett, who wanted to find out if Elizabeth had consented to the marriage plot with Thomas Seymour. He claimed he could see in her face she was guilty, but Elizabeth begged for the release of her governess and for Parry, and she answered her questions very well. She did not incriminate herself, and she won her interrogator's respect, and claimed that Elizabeth sang the same song and stuck to her story. Her household also did the same, and the rest were released. Cat Ashley did suffer in the tower, as she had been left in a cold and dark cell, and she confirmed that it was entirely Thomas Seymour who wanted to marry Elizabeth. This behaviour was not that of a man of court, and was linked to power and treason. It's clear he was a bizarre and strange Tudor man, and as mentioned today, he's seen as an abusive Tudor man, hell-bent on seizing power for himself. It's clear he was jealous of his brother Edward Seymour, who was the Lord Protector, but his actions towards the future Queen Elizabeth I were nothing but inappropriate and disgraceful. It's believed that Elizabeth did not want this behaviour, and the fact she even tried to hide from him shows her true intent. The Seymour plot could have very easily resulted in the deaths and executions of more people and those inside of Elizabeth's household, but one thing that did emerge was the closeness between Elizabeth and Cat Ashley, who remained close with her as a lady-in-waiting when Elizabeth became queen. The trials and tribulations shared by the two bonded them forever, and when Cat passed away, Elizabeth I was greatly moved. But the scandal involving Thomas Seymour greatly affected Elizabeth, and in my opinion, Seymour's behaviour was disgraceful and inappropriate. It's clear that horseplay for him meant more than it did for Elizabeth, and he may have enjoyed this too much. But entering the bedchamber of the princess, breaking all the rules of her household on a number of occasions, this was also very unacceptable and out of order. This was all going on under the watchful eye of Catherine Parr, the widow of Henry VIII, 
Elizabeth's father. Pa's custody of Elizabeth and care of her was nowhere near suitable and was not of any standard which was acceptable. Thank you for watching and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.